Okay, guys, we got to do some headlines. <clears throat> um, oh, there's some weird stuff going on. Uh, I actually had just been talking to Lisa Boyce. Uh, she said that Netanyahu is considering doing a Passover lamb sacrifice. Haven't found the article yet. Don't know where they're going to do that at, but um, it's not surprising. But here's some other stuff that I ran across, just flipping through, looking lightly at the headlines. Uh, the first one that pops up, the, this is World Health Organization, who abortions must continue even at expense of spreading coronavirus. <clears throat> now, there's something else I have to add to, about the coronavirus thing, too. Um, but let me do that at the end. Let's cover this. Um, that's an interesting passage in King, Kings. <laughs> okay. Now, we know what they used to do in the past, right? Offer their children up to Moloch. Uh, it was a blood sacrifice. That's what this abortion thing is. When you get down to the nitty-gritty and, and deep down into what exactly is going on here, that's what this is. Guys, there's a much more sinister, darker agenda under these other agendas driving this thing. It's not about women's rights. It's not about health. health it's not about none of that stuff. <clears throat> it's far darker. And far more sinister. The World Health Organization uh, has been targeted by criticism that it bungled the current pandemic, but criticism of a different sort is plaguing the organization now. The WHO released a policy statement on Sunday stating that they will continue to prioritize abortion. Why is this such a thing? They're going to prioritize abortion. People are dying from this disease, and they're going to prioritize abortion diverting medical assets towards what they labeled a reproductive health. You think about that. This is not about women. This is not about their health. This is, this is simple um, child sacrifice. Plain and simple. Why would they celebrate killing babies? It doesn't make sense. There's a reason behind it. Women's choices and rights to sexual and reproductive health care should be respected, irrespective of whether or not she has a suspected confirmed COVID-19 infection. So, forget the doctors and nurses. They can all just go to hell. She needs to have that abortion whether, she, whether they want to do it or not. See how people are? Who said in the statement, sexual and reproductive health care is integral to universal health coverage and achieving the right to health? No, it is not. This is... This is a, an elective. Abortion is an elective. It's not for your health care. Because you can just have a normal pregnancy and have the baby. Or show some responsibility like an adult. Stop getting pregnant. It's not that hard. This includes contraception, quality health care during and after pregnancy and childbirth. Well, how would it do that if they're killing the baby? And safe abortion to the full extent of the law, the organization added. This is consistent with the proposition of its parent organization, the United Nations. So we know who the enemy is, right? In 2018, the United Nations Human Rights Committee drafted a resolution placing the life of the mother ahead of that of the unborn child. Think about the wording here. Although states, parties um, may adopt measures designed to regulate voluntary terminations of pregnancy, such measures must not result in violation of the right to life of the pregnant woman or girl. Random pause for effect. Or her other rights under the covenant. The resolution read. Do you see the wording being used here? This should be jumping off the pages to everybody. The resolution from the UNHRC also established assisted suicide as a universal human Right. Random pause for effect. I'm going to let this soak for a second. Think about this. Rabbi Yosef Berger, the rabbi of King David's tomb on Mount Zion, noted that this love of abortions is a replay of Pharaoh throwing babies into the River Nile. Oh, it's worse than that. It's a whole lot worse. When is the people of Israel used to burn their children on the hands of Molech. If you don't know what Molech is, do a search for it. It was a horrible way for that child to die, being roasted alive. People read the Bible, read the Bible today, and think it can't be true. 
It is exaggerated, and what is written could never happen today. Oh, yeah. Rabbi Berger said, but the situation today is twice as bad as it was in Egypt. Pharaoh only killed the male babies. Rabbi Hello, they're killing normal, healthy babies. Full abortion, stick them in a crying room, and let them die. And they do worse than that. To a living, breathing, fully born baby. Don't kid yourself. The situation is bad. The spokesman for the uh, nascent Sanhedrin reacted strongly to the pro-abortion by the WHO. This is simply horrifying. Abortions and assisted suicides are both explicitly against the Noahide law. Ooh, there's that term Noahide law again. So many people gave me so much grief when I did videos about this. Oh, they're just for, they're good universal. Yeah, they're good universal laws. I want you to think about this. They're hinging everything in our world off this Noahide law. And look who's gaining in power and control over the world. The people who enacted Noahide laws. Don't, don't deceive yourself. The situation is all supposed to happen, and it's happening exactly the way they want it. Which prohibits the spilling of blood. Rabbi Weiss told Breaking Israel New, these values they call human rights have only one possible outcome, the destruction of humanity. They're ushering in the Antichrist. The Sanhedrin is working with the leaders of several nations to establish a new international body based in Jerusalem on biblical values that will replace the UN. Do you remember all the stuff I've been telling you guys about Mystery Babylon? The 70 nation conference that happened in Israel last year in September. Seven groups of ten nations. Who's going to run it? Israel. They're going to be over the top of it. Beast with seven heads and ten horns. I shouldn't have to spell this out. It should be very obvious. This is what they've been striving for for a long time. That's why every single nation in this world has a, a small Orthodox or Sanhedrin council, council that works with a leader that is elected into that place. Go check it out. Every one of them does. The World Health Organization is the branch of the United Nations responsible for international public health. It has a big job, but has a correspondingly large annual budget of $4.2 billion. Founded in 1851, before the UN was established, the WHO was tasked with combating several pandemics, chief among them cholera, yellow fever, and the bubonic plague. The WHO was nonetheless criticized for how it handled both the 2009 swine flu pandemic, which technically wasn't a pandemic because it didn't stretch across the entire earth, and the 2013 Ebola outbreak, which also wasn't a pandemic, though many people say it was, but it didn't. It, we didn't have the same effect we have now. Claims the organization was top-heavy with bureaucracy and that it spread misinformation. But its handling of the coronavirus pandemic has brought even more criticism down upon the organization. This is a true pandemic. With its claims that it chose to overlook China's mishandling of the outbreak to a degree that led to its spread. China has been accused of suppressing information about the outbreak within its border, including when it began uh, including attempts to censor news of the disease entirely, which they did. Uh, the one woman, um, what they call her, Wuhan Sally or something like that, uh, yeah, she's since disappeared. Nobody knows where she is. China initially claimed there were no cases of person-to-person -person infection, a claim which now seems absurd given the virus's volatility. The Wuhan wet market where the epidemic began has been reopened. Yeah, they've also had a re-blooming of this virus, big time. The WHO has also, and it's mutating, the WHO has also pursued a policy of censoring Taiwan due to pressuring from China. This policy continued despite Taiwan's success in handling the epidemic. In an interview, Assistant Director General Bruce uh, Elward appeared to dodge a question about Taiwan, and when the question was repeated, the connection was cut off, blaming internet connection issues. When the video chat was restarted, he was asked another question about Taiwan, but he claimed to have already answered the question and formally ended the interview. Furthermore, who then attempted to reduce their association with Hayward and subsequently erased his page on their website, redirecting visitors to the page to the general leadership page. Guys, this is all part of what's going to be happening full force during the tribulation. Now, a side note to this, as far as the coronavirus thing goes. I got beat up uh, the other day about the stuff that I put up, about the facts about coronavirus. And how, what I told you in there is you don't die from coronavirus. You die from the, the other infections that pop up. 
from coronavirus. And I had people beat me up left and right on this thing. It's, it, it causes, it's just ARDS. It's not coronavirus. It's all fake. It's all false flag. It, 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 they're sick with ARDS. Well, first of all, you need to look up what ARDS means. And I didn't get to address this yesterday like I wanted to, but I'm going to address it now. It's acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as wet lung. Now, understand this. ARDS is a condition. It's a syndrome. It's not a disease. ARDS is what happens to your lungs when you get a very bad case of pneumonia, a very bad case of bronchitis, a very bad case of tuberculosis, a very bad case of allergies. That's what ARDS is. Now, we've got medical professionals doing I've never seen this before. I don't know what this is. It, it, it's just ARDS. Uh, it's not coronavirus. Yet these same people are testing positive for coronavirus. I did a video show, going through an article and even linked it showing that when they scan you, Lisa Boyce is in the hospital right now getting a CAT scan. They're looking at uh, coronavirus specifically. Creates this honeycomb pattern in your lungs. They do CAT scans to find it. People are testing positive that people are dying from this. So all the people that think this is fake, you need to go back and do more research because you're going on what somebody else told you in a video. You're not looking this up. This is what ARDS is, and it's caused by all kinds of things. It's just a syndrome. It's a condition that your lungs get in because of something else. That's what kills you. Because now, with your lungs in this condition, you're susceptible to bronchitis, pneumonia, all these other things. And that's what's killing the people, not the coronavirus. The coronavirus just opens you up to it. So, so I wanted to cover this. I wanted to try to get this as clear as I possibly could. Can I find the website I had lit yesterday? I was going to cover this yesterday, but I got tied up with something else. Was it this one? The virus itself does not directly kill someone. Rather, it is the patient's immune response to the virus that kills the patient. It's where the fluid comes from. That's with any infection. The immune system responds to get rid of the pathogen. That is the job of the immune system. Sometimes the immune system response becomes excessive, releasing a lot of immune-based substances called cytokines, or cytokines, depending on where you're from. They are designed to turn on and stimulate the immune system. When the production of these substances becomes excessive, the resultant cytokine storm overwhelms the host patient, leading to organ system failure and death. In the case of COVID-19, the excessive cytokine production damages the lungs, causing the lungs to fill with fluid, which prevents oxygen from getting into the blood to nourish the other organs in the body. That's why they got to be put on a respirator. That's ARDS. So all these people that are just railing in these comment sections about it's all fake, it's a false flag, none of it's real, they just have ARDS. You need to go look up what ARDS is. You need to actually go dig into what's going on here. And these medical professionals, supposed medical professionals, that are coming on and doing videos saying, I've never seen nothing like it before, it's ARDS. Well, there's something wrong with you if you've never seen it before, because every time you have somebody with a respiratory infection, they have ARDS. It's a symptom, it's a condition of the particular infection that they have. It's simple to find. I wanted to address this yesterday while it was still fresh, but I didn't have time, so I'm doing it now. Coronavirus doesn't kill you. Coronavirus is a bioweapon. It was designed in a lab. There's a patent in the patent office, and you can go look it up. Ironically, there was a lab in Wuhan that was working with this. And they got it, they let it get out, and they went and they infected a bunch of people with it. This was supposed to happen. It's not a false flag. They're doing this on purpose. And it's all going to result in the beginning of the tribulation. So don't come into my comment section and tell me I'm not doing my research. I'm showing it to you on the screen. Unfortunately, most people don't watch this far, so they don't get the information. So I'm sure I'll get a comment. I don't care. The facts of the matter are, this will kill you. 
if you don't get help. Now, not everybody gets ARDS from this. Not everybody who's sick has COVID-19. Some people just have a respiratory infection. Get antibiotics, move on down the road. Take some antihistamines, move on down the road. But with this particular setup, as, as aggressive as it is, because it, it makes COVID makes your immune system overreact, you've got to be put on a respirator until your body can expel the fluid because you can't cough it up. It dries out the top of your lungs. You can't expectorate this stuff, which is what you're supposed to do normally. So you have to be on a respirator till your body is able to get rid of it, till your body is able to process this and get you past the infection. Another side effect of this is it causes 20% uh, respiratory damage. It's permanent. It will not come back. That's what Wuhan is finding out now. That's why we're now doing CAT scans on people because they figured out you do a CAT scan, you find out what's going on. That's why now when you get tested, they give you a CAT scan. They're looking for that honeycomb pattern. They're looking for that damage. So, on my channel, I don't know about anybody else, on my channel, this has been put to rest. COVID-19 does not kill you. It's the secondary issues that kill you. I just read you the article, and I've, I've put all kinds of links out there. You can Google this stuff. That's all I did. You just saw me do it. It's the secondary issues that kill you. That's why they're, they're, a lot of them are doing hydroxychloroquine. If you go look up how hydroxychloroquine works, it helps you release that fluid. It suppresses those things, your, the reaction. Go look at how, because uh, they used to use hydroxychloroquine to treat a malaria. Go look at what malaria does to you. Then, then you'll understand how hydroxychloroquine works. Hydroxychloroquine keeps that overreaction from happening. That keeps COVID-19 under control. Then they give you a Z-Pack to kill whatever resulting infection comes from that. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? How you? Not too Not bad. Much. <laughs> Just here. Yeah, me too. I got my Diet Coke. That's my buddy. <laughs> So, Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. That's all right. So, when you have these respiratory issues and you go in, that's the first thing they check you for. Okay, well, obviously you've got ARDS. You're having problems breathing. You're coughing up. You're expecting this fluid. That's ARDS. So, they check you for COVID-19 because the, what happens after that is if you have COVID, is it dries it out so you it can't get rid of it. It kills those things, those cilia, remember? I did a video talking about this. Those cilia move that stuff out so you can cough it up. It pulls it up here so you can get rid of it. Well, if those die and slough off, the stuff can't go nowhere. It stays in your lungs. Now your body has to absorb it and push it out through your urinary tract system. So when you dig into this and look, it becomes quite clear that this, this is a real thing. But it's not what's killing you. It's all the other stuff that's killing you. So like if you, let's say you've got really bad allergies and it's in your lungs, it's really tearing you up, and then you're exposed to coronavirus. Chances don't look good for you because now it's going to take what you've already got going on and make it 10 times worse because the coronavirus pushes your body to attack the lungs, creating this, this ARDS symptoms or this, arm, arm, this ARDS condition, and then it just blows away and gets super, super bad. Then you got to go on a respirator. A respirator helps you breathe till this can be passed. Without it, you're, you're going to die. That's why so many people are dying within a day of being discovered they had coronavirus. Pre-existing conditions. My lungs are jacked up. My mother-in-law's lungs are jacked up. She's at, at less than 50% lung capacity. She gets it, she's dead. Because then the COVID is going to create that ARDS condition and is going to make it a whole lot worse. Her immune system is going to attack that's it. She'll drown. So that's how this works. You can't. I don't care what a, anybody comes on and says. I don't even care if we can prove they're a doctor. If they're not telling you this, if they're not giving you the information, you're literally seeing it on the screen. If they're not telling you this, there's something going on here. They're trying to suppress the truth because anyone can get ARDS. Did you cough, when you got up this morning, did you cough and, and cough a bunch of fluid? That's ARDS. Fluid in the lungs. I just read it to you. It's right here. COVID makes it worse. 
So you basically, you drown because your body, because it kills these cilia in the top of the lungs, your body can't get rid of it. That's the sucky part about it is after you're, you're cured, that upper 20% is all jacked up. So now you always have fluid in your lungs. So the next time you get a respiratory infection, it's even worse than what it would be normally if you were perfectly healthy. So see, I do my research. I do look this stuff up. But I still got people that they don't want to look and go, you know what, that actually makes sense. Hey, it's not Mr. Christian telling you. Look at the screen. It's right there. Tells you exactly how it works. It's simple. So you take anybody, you take anybody who's coming on and they're doing a video saying, oh, well, I, I've never seen this before. This is so unique that it's like altitude sickness. Yeah. What's altitude sickness? Ards. Fluid in the lungs. Pulmonary edema. Go look it up. These, these aren't very good medical professionals if they don't know what this stuff is. And me, old regular old Mr. Christian, I don't know nothing is sitting here going, guys, why do you... If you're in the military, anybody who's a veteran, and you've flown overseas, what'd they tell you to do when you got in there? Take your boots off, loose, unblouse your pants. Why do you think that was? Edema. It keeps fluid from building up. It lets everything flow to push it out of your system. Otherwise, you could end up with that. It could also cause a clot. What is that re re reminiscent of? Ards. Fluid in the lungs. You die from drowning. It's not rocket science, people. But yet, I, I, I get this all the time. Well, hey, Look, if you're not willing to pay attention to the information I'm giving, that's your problem. Go to another channel. I'm trying to help everyone understand how this works. It's not the COVID you've got to worry about. It's the secondary problems you got to worry about. Namely, ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. That's what gets you. See, even you look here, it's rare. Fewer than 200,000 cases per year in the U.S. Not anymore. <laughs> Not with COVID-19. COVID-19 makes it a whole lot higher. So, Dig into the information. This this wet lung is some serious stuff. It's all right there. So anyway, that's that's the end of this argument. I don't want to get into that stuff anymore because it's 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 an argument that is not going to go anywhere because people so desperately want there to be a conspiracy where there is no conspiracy. The only conspiracy is they're trying to usher in the Antichrist. Right, so that discussion's over on my channel. I'm not, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's like I barely even talk about the, the uh, pre-trib rapture anymore because I'm done with that argument. It's the truth and that's it. Government approves coronavirus restrictions. We're in the Jerusalem Post. Sorry, but I needed to get that out. Government approves coronavirus restrictions. General closure today at 7 p.m. Here's the thing about this. And we're going to look at, I think, two or three stories on this. These things, what they're doing here, they are... They are um, locking everyone down for Passover. I have scripture on this. The government approved a set of new restrictions on Tuesday based on those laid out the day before by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. The quarantine will begin Tuesday at 7 p.m., limiting traffic from city to city until this Friday at 7 p.m. Specifically, from Tuesday at 7 p.m. to Friday at 6 a.m., a person is prohibited from leaving the area of his local municipality except to get food, medicine, and other essential products or to obtain essential services. Moreover, from Tuesday at 8 p.m. until April 12 at 8 a.m., there will be no public transportation, including international flights. They're shutting everything down for this short time frame. Watch, we're going to get there. From, uh, moreover, Jerusalem will be divided into seven boroughs, and traffic between them will be restricted unless this is an essential need. Police will be allowed to enforce these regulations that can prevent vehicles from traveling, as well as asking people to supply ID and information about their comings and goings. Here in Guadalupe County, my wife has a travel pass. There's been cops everywhere. If you do look like you're just out tooling around having fun, they're stopping you. Hey, 
What are you doing out? Because we're under stay-in-place orders. Most of Texas is under stay-in-place orders. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't realize we're under stay-in-place orders. You can get a fine and go to jail. Children of divorced parents can be transported between homes. The new restrictions come as a number of people infected with the novel virus continues to spike, reaching 9,003 by Tuesday morning. Some 60 people have died of COVID-19 and 153 are in serious condition, including 113 people who were intubated. That's not a respirator. That's where they put the tube down into your lungs to help you breathe because that, that machine can also remove fluid. People in comas get that stuff. People unconscious get that stuff. In addition to the travel restrictions, the health ministry has formalized that all people over the age of six must wear masks in public beginning on April 12th. All of the regulations are in effect until April 10th at 6 a.m., at which time, unless otherwise indicated, the country will return to the previous set of instructions. Okay, so you see what's going on with this. You see what's happening here. Now, there's more to this than just that. Uh... I think that was it for that one. All right. Passover closure to begin at 7 p.m. Curfew to take effect Wednesday afternoon. Same thing as what he was talking about. But this is spe this was specifically held back until Passover because they've been talking about doing this for over a week. But it was held back for Passover. We're going to get there. Stay with me. Passover closure to begin at 7 p.m. Curfew to take effect at Wednesday afternoon. Come on. The cabinet on Tuesday approved a closure and curfew over the pass Passover holiday to stem the outbreak of the coronavirus, which will keep Israelis within their cities and towns and authorize police to detain violators. The sweeping orders will also uh, require Israelis to start wearing face masks outdoors beginning Sunday. They're telling us to do that here right now. We need to wear a face mask everywhere we go. Following a several-hour meeting, ministers greenlighted emergency regulations that will ban all intercity traffic from 7 p.m. on Tuesday until Friday at 6 a.m. Supermarkets, food deliveries, and other essential services will, however, continue to operate until Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Oh, come on. Okay, so something else to note. I haven't found the article yet. But supposedly they're going to do a lamb sacrifice for this during this time frame. Do you remember what Trump's been saying? Last couple of days, he's been doing these press conferences. Showed one last night. People were talking about the presidential seal is gone. Yeah, look closer in the background. They're underground. If you look close at the background of what's going on there, that's not their normal briefing room. They're underground. He says there's going to be a lot of deaths in the next couple of weeks. He says there's going to be, this is going to be the worst two to three weeks we've had. Why? What's coming? Evidently he knows something. Evidently they all know something because they're all hiding. They're all taking off and hiding. So you catch one of those videos, look in the background. Look close in the background. Look at what you see. It looks like a storage room. Especially off to the one side, the, the left side of the uh, little stage area with the curtain where there's no seal. You look back in the back back there. It's all storage. They're underground. They're already in, in a bunker hiding somewhere. They're already on lockdown. So they know something's going to happen this weekend. They know. They're very aware of something's going to happen this weekend. There should be no secret to anybody that of how aware everybody is. Because they're making plans for this weekend. What have we covered in the last two weeks? See, here's the cool thing about this is that we know is what we know. They have access to other things that are very specifically telling them what's about to happen. And you see them showing the evidence of it in the, the preparations that they're making. Now at some point, they're going to lock everybody down and tell them not to even come out of their houses. Here's traffic jams. This is being live updated. Traffic jams reported throughout central Israel hours before city closures. Now, they're, they're saying that they can come out. But what they're telling them over there is stay at home. Don't come outside. Just stay in your doors. Uh, stay in your houses. Public security minister visits ultra-Orthodox Jerusalem neighborhoods, says police enforcement of the national lockdown should be determined but sensitive. Now, we're all on lockdown, right? Haven't they more or less been on lockdown? What's significant about this next three days that they're going to lock this down? 
why is this being highlighted over the rest of the lockdown that everybody's been under? Why is it just that time frame? Something's going to happen. They know something's going to happen. Oh, this is interesting. WhatsApp tightens sharing limits to curb virus misinformation. I use WhatsApp. A bunch of us do. Rush to shops reported amid egg shortage before Passover. We got eggs here too. That's interesting because we got a problem with our eggs here too. People are buying up all the eggs. That's interesting too to me because that seems like that's a worldwide issue. But I think eggs are kind of mentioned a lot in the Bible. Um, I'd have to do another study on that one. Let's see. Seven degrees of exit rollback of virus rules and vision lengthy phase process. So we see all this stuff happening. Now, when we go over here, we're in Isaiah 2620. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. I want to read this in context because this, ma this means something here. Let's do, let's start up here in verse 15. You have increased the nation, O Lord. You have increased the nation. You are glorified. You have expanded all the borders of the land. Lord, in trouble they have visited you. They poured out a prayer when your chastening was upon them. As a woman with child is in pain and cries out in her pangs when she draws near the time of her delivery. Listen to the wording. So have we been in your sight, O Lord. So have we been in your sight. Remember Revelation chapter 12? Before the child is harpazoed? Same description. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. Basically, they farted. <laughs> we have not accomplished any deliverance in the earth, nor have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Listen to what he's saying here. All that pain and suffering and nothing came out of it. Nothing. They haven't accomplished any deliverance or in the earth. Nothing has happened. Your dead shall live. The dead in Christ will rise first. Together with my dead body they shall arise. He's alive. Why is he saying with my dead body? He's dead in Christ. That's the referencing here. We know that that wasn't that at that, that time, but listen to it now. Together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing. They'll sing a new song. You who dwell in the dust. The, the dead are supposed to have their own song they sing. For your dew is like the dew of the herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment, three days maybe, until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. The earth will disclose her blood, the blood of the saints. She will no longer cover her slain. The blood will cry out. Guys, it's all tribulation. It's all tribulation. When you read this in context, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. This is talking about this. That's incredible. Now again, this other this, this other discovery that I had made in um, Ecclesiastes. You guys remember Ecclesiastes 12? Let's read it again. Because the more we read it, the more it starts to really seem like it's applying. Ecclesiastes 12.1 Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. Difficult days? Could that be tribulation? And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Who's saying that now? I'm tired of this world. This world is dark, has no, nothing for me. I'm ready to leave. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened. What does the book of Revelation say about when they're going to be darkened? There's two different times when it's going to happen. And the clouds do not return after the rain. That means it's going to stay cloudy. How cloudy has it been in your area for the last two weeks? Yeah, mine too. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble. Now, 
from this point on, think about what we're doing right now as it applies. As this applies to it. The keepers of the house tremble because of coronavirus. And the strong men bow down because they're sick. This thing gets everybody. When the grinders cease because they are few, business and industry have shut down. Places have closed. And those that look through the windows grow dim. People are tired. They're worn out. They're losing faith and hope. When the doors are shut in the streets, Isaiah 26. When the doors are shut in the streets, all the businesses are closed down. And the sound of grinding is low. Almost no work is going on. Even 14 miles south of town out here in the country, it's like friggin' highway over here because so many people are driving in and out. We might see two cars a day now. Three, maybe. When one rises up at the sound of a bird, hey, what was that? Because people are so quiet outside. Y'all hear how quiet outside is right now. And all the daughters of music are brought low. Everything's quiet. Concerts shut down. Everything's shut down. Also, they are afraid of heights. People are afraid to fly because almost every time a flight happens, somebody's sick. And of terrors in the way. What terrors would there be? But right now, we got all kinds of animals getting up into stuff. People getting arrested for going out in there. You don't know where you can go that's safe. Fighting in the stores. Terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, that's happening right now as we speak. The grasshopper is a burden. That's happening right now as we speak. And desire fails. That I see that everywhere. For man goes to his eternal home. For man goes to his eternal home. That's heaven, right? Rapture. And the mourners go out into the streets. To me, this sounds like it's talking about right now with what we're going through. Guys, this is just a little piece of the evidence we've covered so far in multiple videos. The revelations that have come out that are telling us the time frame that we are in. And the mourners go out into the streets. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well before people die. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. You can keep reading. You can see more stuff in there. But how interesting that that seems like it's talking about what Isaiah 26 was talking about. All pretty close. Shut your doors behind you and wait till the indignation is past. And then this. And I think our government officials are fully aware that this is about to happen. That's why they're making the plans they're making. That's why, from last year to the first three months of this year, almost 1,500 chief executives have resigned their positions with no warning or, or notice and have taken off, many of them, to New Zealand. Bill Gates has a company that builds three- and four-story underground bunkers, luxury of luxury, hiding in the caves. Companies that do underground bunkers are two years behind on orders. They're hiring so many extra crews to go out there and do that stuff. Of course, now they're probably not because people want bunkers. There. People are buying uh, connexes, shipping containers, digging a pit with a tractor and dropping it underground so they can hide in it. It all matches, guys. All this stuff. It all matches. And it's just, it's incredible to see it and to know what this is. And to know what's happening. Let's see. Chastened by suffering. What is he talking about over here? Yeah. Has nothing. So guys, this is why we stay in the scriptures. This is why we read. But this is why we stand strong and have faith and keep watching. This has been a test of people's faith. It's going to continue to test your faith to see whether you're still going to keep watching for him like he commanded you to do. Simple thing. Easy thing. But look at that. How amazing is that? All right. Let's look and see if there's any more headlines we need to cover.
They're hitting the supermarkets. Eggs are gone like crazy. Let's do a quick look and see what we discover with the word egg. Hmm. Can flavorless food, Job 6-6, can flavorless food be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? I like egg whites, personally. Luke 11:12. Uh, or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? So we see egg mentioned a couple of times. I wonder if eggs is mentioned. All right. So Deuteronomy 22:6. If a bird's nest happens to be before you along the way, in any tree or on the ground with young ones or eggs, and the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the young. Job 39.14, For she leaves her eggs on the ground and warms them in the dust. Isaiah 10.14, My hand is found like a nest the riches of the people. And as one gathers eggs that are left, I have gathered all the earth. And there was no one who moved his wing nor opened his mouth with even a peep. Isaiah 34.15, Then the arrow... There the arrow snake shall make her nest and lay eggs and hatch and gather them under her shadow. There also shall the hawks be gathered, every one with her mate. Isaiah 59.5 They hatch vipers, eggs, and weave the spider's web. He who eats their eggs dies, and from that which is crushed a viper breaks out. So I'm trying to figure out is where the, this egg analogy is coming from. And I think, I just dawned on me what it is. So, in Exodus 19.4, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Eagles' legs. Could we possibly be the eggs? Exodus 25.20, And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The face of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. That's for the Ark of the Covenant. So I'm looking at this wings thing and it's like, okay, I understand now. God is the eagle. We are the eggs. He's caring for the eggs. I think that's where kind of maybe where that whole thing is coming from, why eggs are always gone. So many people are buying so many eggs, it's unreal. Why? Where are you putting them all? You can only eat so many. And you set them in the fridge long enough and they get real runny and they don't cook up very well. Or until they get bad. So what's the deal? Why are people going with the eggs? Same thing with the toilet paper. Why has toilet paper been such a focus? They go up and they buy all this toilet paper. And it's like... And nobody can explain why. Now we have the same thing with eggs. You never can keep any eggs in there. There are whole families now. Six and seven member families. That are going into our local stores. And they're spreading out. And they, all, them, all of them got money. Because they only let you buy one thing of eggs at a time. They're all buying one and going to different registers. It's supposed to be one per household, one per family. So they're tricking the system. They're buying up everything they possibly can. Well, to me, that, that stands out. When you see something like that, it's an unconscious reaction of people to a particular time. And when you look at all these wings here, wings of an eagle, all the wings, so God's going to protect us. Maybe those that egg, maybe that's a hint at us and what we're, what we're doing. Just throwing it out there. You never know. All right, what other headlines do we have? Let's see. And you shall tell your children this Passover more than ever. I actually read that article. And they're pretty focused on this Passover specifically. Uh, yeah, lots of, there's lots of stuff going on here. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Because um, there's... No, let's do a search. Okay, let's do a search, and let's search for that article about Netanyahu doing the Passover sacrifice.
Wait, what? I guess I needed to put specifically Netanyahu in there. What were you buying at Here we go. April 7th, that is today. Here it is. Netanyahu considers Paschal Lamb sacrifice on the Temple Mount for the first time in 2,000 years. When have we ever had this? Well, we haven't had it for 2,000 years. So here you go. I saw a couple other people talking about it. Let's do this. Come on. Come on. What are you doing? My computer's so slow. Okay, the Sanhedrin tasks Shimshon El Boin, head of the Temple Mount organization, with submitting a letter to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to perform the ritual Korban Pesach, Passover sacrifice, in its proper place, the Temple Mount. They'll do it probably right in front of the East Gate which would be just to the, if you're standing on the Temple Mount looking at the Mount of Olive, I've done a ton of studies on this, if you're looking at the Mount of Olive, you'll be to the left of Al-Aqsa Mosque. It's an open area right there. In fact, I think there's a fountain there, which goes down to a spring down below it. But you can look right, right through the east gate, right to the, uh, right to uh, the top of the Mount of Olive. In fact, Jesus, before he made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, sat on that very same spot. There's a, there's a couple of big rocks there. He sat there, looked right at the temple through the east gate, and then went and got a donkey and walked in there. I'll show you a bunch of maps and all this stuff. Anyway, um, proper place on the Temple Mount, and it is biblically mandated time, Wednesday afternoon, the eve of the Passover feast. So you guys see what's going on here. The fulfillment of all this was 2,000 years ago, and now you're about to see it happen again. The abomination of desolation. God forbid we should allow the coronavirus to strike his children with rising up to bring about the solution given in the Torah for epidemics. The letter read, The request comes in the wake of the government rejecting request to perform a reenactment of the Corin, or Corbin Pesach. The full dress reenactment has taken place for the past nine years, drawing large crowds of the devoted, but this year the request to hold the event was denied due to health ministry restrictions. They don't ever do it on the Temple Mount, though, she's dreaming. They always do it on the Mount of Olive or somewhere else. The project is of the utmost importance for all mankind, Rabbi Hillel Weiss, spokesman for the Sanhedrin, told Breaking Israeli News. He noted that the original Passover sacrifice offered in Egypt on the night before the Exodus was intended to stop the final plague, which was described as a, it's a Negev disease, or Negev is disease. In addition, King David purchased the Temple Mount, built an altar, and offered a sacrifice to stop a plague. The ritual will include burning the incense that is prepared for the exclusive use by the Kohanim in the Temple service, which they now have the original recipe for it. They found 900 pounds of it in a cave. The incense is considered an essential element in ending epidemics. See, they've never been able to do this before because they didn't have the incense and didn't know how to make it. They just had some documentation on it. Well, they've since opened up a cave, and they uh, supposedly they also found the original tabernacle of David, the one Moses built in there, uh, in addition to all kinds of other stuff, red heifer ashes, 900 pounds of this incense, you know, they, and all the ingredients. They found a ton of stuff in there. So the thing is, they've never had everything they've needed to be able to do this, and they've never done it on the Temple Mount for 2,000 years. Why all of a sudden now? Why this Passover? We'll look at everything else we found. Look at everything else that we're seeing. This should jump right off the pages at you. This is important. This is important that this is happening. Every year, the Israeli police stop several people attempting to bring sheep onto the Temple Mount. Listen, for the purposes of personal sacrifices. Also requests to perform the ceremony in the proper place and at the proper time have always been rejected. So they've never done this before. This would be the first time. But the request from the Sanhedrin received an unexpectedly different response this year. Usually this type of request is rejected out of hand, El Boim told Breaking His Real News. We were pleasantly surprised when we were informed that the request was forwarded to Gilad, or Gilad, Gilad, Gilad Erdin, the internal security minister in charge of what happens on the Temple Mount. Even if the request is denied, the non-rejection signals a change of heart for the Prime Minister who stated one month ago that he rejected an agreement with the right-wing Otsma Yehudit party. 
that would have permitted Jews to pray on the Temple Mount. Netanyahu admitted that he preferred to lose the election rather than give his permission to Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount. But that's changed. But it is not only Netanyahu who is having a change of heart about the renewal of Torah rituals. The Hebrew language ultra-Orthodox news site, Kikar Shabbat, reported that the Haredi organization named Torat uh, Haketo Shim is now calling for the renewal of the Corbin Pesach as a solution to the coronavirus. And this has been in the news for a week, over a week. This is surprising since most ultra-Orthodox leaders have instructed their followers to avoid ascending to the Temple Mount despite an exponential growth in Jews appearing at their holiest site in recent years, especially this year, last year and this year. The announcement in Kikar Shabbat is believed to be the first time any self-identified ultra-Orthodox group has made such a move. The success or failure of the Jewish return to its holiest site and to the biblically mandated commandments is entirely dependent on the public and not on the government, El Boim said. Since we do not have a king, since we do not have a king, he, or sorry, the government, after all, serves at the will of the people. We do not want a conflict with the government, but at the same time, if the majority of the Jewish people demand equal rights on the Temple Mount, the government will have to listen, especially at a time when no side has a clear mandate. In addition to permission to perform the ritual on the Temple Mount, El Boim filed for permits to transport the altar from where it is being stored in Elkana in Samaria to Jerusalem. The Passover sacrifice can only be offered in one place, on the Temple Mount. The sacrifice does not require the actual temple structure, but it does require an altar that is built to adhere to the biblical requirements. Such an altar was constructed last year and stands ready, and ironically, it was consecrated on the last day of Hanukkah in December last year. Sorry, December 2018. So, has anybody read the book of Ezra? Same thing happened. We're seeing the Bible coming to life. All the shadows from the past, from the Old Testament, are happening right now. They're all pointing to this one moment in time. Now, we got people out there crying about setting dates and all that kind of stuff. I don't have to set a date. <laughs> Everything happening in the world and the Bible is doing it for me. Do what you want, do what you want with that information. The square altar is nine feet square and five feet high. It's constructed of uh, aerated concrete. The material was ruled to be fit for use in the temple. It's also lighter. In the Talmud, it is explained that steel may not be used to cut the stones of the altar since the temple service brings life into the world and steel, as it is used for war, takes life. God doesn't like um, hewn stone anyway. I think they did it all with hand tools back then. Stones for the altar may not be cut using steel since the temple service brings life into the world's steel. The idea it is light and easily transported and sized to be loaded uh, onto a truck. The altar was constructed of a metal frame designed only for the purposes of transport portability. The intent was to create an altar that could be taken to the temple mount at a moment's notice should the need arise. They can build it literally in like, I think, 15 minutes. The peace etch offering has special significance as there are only two mitzvahs Biblical commandments, for which non-compliance receives the most severe punishment mandated by the Torah. Karet, being cut off from the community, or excommunicated, brit melah, circumcision, and the Corbin Pesach. All the elements stand ready, the vessels have been prepared, and merely need to be immersed in a ritual bath to be purified. How do they do that? Red heifer ashes. They have their red heifer and their ashes. Kohanim, Jewish men descended from Aaron the priest, are registered for service and their biblically mandated clothes are ready. Wine and oil prepared for the strictest requirements are ready. Last year was when they had their because you have to you have to let the first crop go, second crop go, and this is the third crop you use for the temple. They got their third crop last year on the on the olive and everything. And for the wine. Um, they're ready. A red heifer is being raised, but lacking one, the halakha. Torah law permits time-bound public sacrifices like the Corban Pesach and the Corban Talmud, twice daily offering, to be brought in uh, impurity. And that's what I, took, I read you guys about uh, in Numbers 28, what we do with our prayers in the morning and evening prayer. The Sanhedrin recently performed an intense study concerning the current status. It's also, it was mandated in Exodus 12, which is where we get a lot of our information for what's happening now. 
uh, Passover offering and concluded that at this juncture, one sacrifice made at the Temple Mount brought in the name of the entire Jewish people would suffice. So now they're changing the laws. Despite various issues of Jewish law, such as ritual impurity and lack of a high priest, Jews are still required and technically able to bring the sacrifice. Did you hear what he said? <clears throat> Who would be their high priest? Mashiach. Do you not think that maybe they're doing this to bring him out? They've never done it before. This is the first time in 2,000 years. What do you think? Kind of stands out, don't it? Kind of makes you wonder if all this stuff that we've been showing and all this stuff we've been sharing is true. <clears throat> the only thing preventing the Jewish people from performing the Passover sacrifice is the Israeli government. In a letter to Netanyahu, the organizations emphasized that they were requesting the government enforce equal freedom to all religions on the Temple Mount as legislated by Israeli and international law. Muslims are currently afforded free and unlimited access to the Temple Mount. Small groups of Jews are only permitted to enter the compound during restricted hours via one gate, and only after rigorous background and security checks. Once on the compound, Jews must follow a set route and are only permitted to stand in one place for a few minutes at a time. Jews are not permitted to eat or drink, and the water fountains at the site are for the exclusive use of Muslims. The Sanhedrin emphasized that the plan to bring the altar to the Temple Mount was entirely consistent with President Trump's recently released deal of the century, recently released deal of the century, which recognizes Israel's full sovereignty over the site. People of every faith should be permitted to pray in the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, in a matter that is fully respectful to their religion, taking into account the times of each religion's prayers and holidays, as well as other religious factors, factors the text of the deal reads. Acknowledging the President's role in helping the Jewish people move towards renewing the Temple, Rabbi Dove Stein wrote him a letter one month ago asking for his intervention in allowing the Corbin Pesach to take place for the sake of healing the world. One month ago, they've been planning this for quite a while. No matter what the response from the Israeli government, a lamb has already been acquired for the sacrifice and stands ready. Tell me that it's not going to happen this weekend and I'll tell you you're crazy. If that doesn't bring it home for you, I don't know what will. We've given you guys almost all the scripture. We've shown you the links. We've shown you the news stories. We've shown you all the stuff that's going on around the world. We've shown you how it all ties scripturally and biblically to this time frame. And Romans 11.25 It's getting close. 7,776,000,000. We only need just a little over a million more people. It's only going to take a couple days. The timing is perfect. When have we ever had 10 sevens? Seven being biblically, being a biblical number of completion, ten being the biblical number of divine completion. When have we ever had that? Never. Everything that's going on right now has never happened before. We are completely in the dark in this. We are in 100% uncharted territory. Last year we had all the same things. Been going on like that for a while. This year is totally different. So, I don't know what else to say to convince you. It's not my job to convince you. It's your job to decide whether you believe it or not. I don't know what else to say to convince you. The next four or five days are astounding. And as we get a little bit closer, if, if everything holds together and and things permit, I'm going to try to do a live stream for when this hits all sevens. If I can. It just depends on what's happening. But guys, 
It's amazing. That is amazing of what's happening. It's astounding what's happening. Wait. I'm at a loss for words. There's never in, in human history have we had this before. Ever. So that's headlines plus a, few, a little bit of extra stuff. Coronavirus and all that, that stuff don't even matter anymore. There are far more important things going on right now that we need to focus on. Far more important. Because they're about to usher in this Antichrist with blood. We're all on lockdown. Captive audience. They've been calling him with blood. So, you decide. What makes sense to you, you decide. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just completely at a loss. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, love you guys. Love y'all. See you in the next one.